Hello everybody. Welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is ADN Payment Connector in Dynamics 365 Corners. My name is Fabian Chiraman. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live event and this session is being recorded on behalf of Microsoft Corporation. To support this Tech Talk, we have Srina Sundaresan, Prano Kumar, Menakse Sajedi and Harish Jai Pragash from Microsoft Fast Track team. Now let's kick off today's uh, session with an exciting agenda on ADN payment capabilities in Dynamics 365 Commerce. To start, we will provide a quick glimpse into the world of ADN and ADN team will walk us through the what makes ADN special and how it helps business globally. Moving on, we will shift our focus to real life business scenarios, spotlighting pivotal role of ADN placed within Dynamics 365 Commerce. After that, ADN team will show a live demo of S1, F2, ADN, all-in-one Android device. Finally, we are opening the floor for your questions. So we encourage you to take this opportunity to deepen your understanding of ADN. I will hand over to Jacob from ADN team uh, to get this started. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sheldon. And thank you uh, to, the, to the Microsoft Fast Track team here on the call for hosting this. We are super excited for this opportunity to present Audien uh, and of course our integration into Dynamics Commerce today. From the audience side, it will be Laurie and myself presenting. As you can see here on the slides, we will do a quick introduction, first of all. And as I'm already talking, uh, my name is, I'm part of the EMEA Tech Partnership team at Audien based in Amsterdam. And in my role, I'm responsible for our partnership with Microsoft, as well as its ecosystem of ISVs and system integrators, specifically for the EMEA region. With me today is Laura Aguilar. Laura, may I ask you for a quick intro as well? First, thank you, Jacob. Uh, so my name is Laura Aguilar. Uh, so as mentioned by Jacob, I'm a product lead in the EMEA region, working closely with the engineering teams of Microsoft and IDN, currently based of Amsterdam. Uh, and I also am helping optimizing the project for our partners and providing solutions to our merchants using Microsoft project, uh, and always work very closely uh, with all of the person involved on this slide. Perfect. Thank you, Laura. And real quick, aside from myself and Laura, I'd also like to quickly introduce or make you aware of the full team working on the Microsoft relationship from our side. Um, so Alessio, you can see here on the left, manages the overall partnership on a global level. So with any requests regard regarding the US, APAC, LATAM, you can reach out to Alessio and as I said, myself for the EMEA region. In our roles, Alessio and I mainly focus on the strategic initiatives and the joint go-to-market that we have in place with Microsoft, while Sander, as well as Laura, who you already heard about, uh, are in the lead from a product perspective indeed. And I think Laura explained that really well already. So the idea here is that we can really cover all time zones and provide local support to not only Microsoft, but also the customers and the partners using the integration that we have with Microsoft. So let's move forward. Before we get into the actual details, we just really quickly want to highlight that Audien is the only payment provider natively integrated with Dynamics 365 Commerce. So this means that this integration is available out of the box and then can be configured directly in your Dynamics Commerce environment. And of course, today we will talk more about how that works, what that means, and how we can best use it. Needless to say that we are super proud that Microsoft selected us to take this position, and it's been a very rewarding journey collaborating with their development team. I think numbers usually speak a little bit louder than words, and I want to give you an idea of the scale that we operate in here with Microsoft. So last year, we processed over 150 million transactions via the integration, totaling a volume or a process volume of over 11 billion US dollars. During Black Friday week, which is always a fun metric, uh, we processed close to 4 million transactions over the span of five days, just to give you an idea, uh, again, of the, of the scale that we can handle here. Overall, we saw a 87% year over year growth with uh, the volume process of the integration. So it's very exciting to see the continued adoption of Dynamics 365 Commerce as well as customers choosing for ADM as part of those implementations. And the merchants that are using the integration are some of the largest and the most well-known brands in the world. So this includes the names or the likes like Pandora, Patagonia, Columbia, Sportswear, Bestseller, etc. And as you can see, these are retailers really operating at a global scale, conducting business across all channels with 
typically quite high demand in shoppers expecting seamless experiences both online and offline. Before going further, I would like to take a quick step back, um, just for those of you who are not familiar with Onion yet. This is the obligatory company overview slide, but let me just highlight the relevant items for you. So if it wasn't clear yet, Audien is a payment service provider. We help businesses accept payments globally across all channels. Good to know here is that we do this using our own banking licenses, meaning we act not only as the gateway and the processor, but we also act as the acquirer for our customers. These banking licenses or these banking licenses also enable us to provide financial services such as bank accounts, capital, as well as card issuing. Another cool metric to highlight here is that we just announced this morning, actually as part of our earnings reports, that we achieved a process volume of 970 billion in 2023, which we which is a 26% year over year growth of the total volume we processed. Lastly, Audien was founded and is headquartered in Amsterdam. I think that's good for you to know, uh, but we operate globally with over 27 offices in all the key markets. This is quite critical uh, in the payments world because payments require local expertise with regards to regulations, payment preferences of shoppers, and of course, the unique challenges that we see in, in each country. Now, that being said, why do the merchants that you saw earlier choose for the combination of Microsoft together with Audi? To understand this, we need to have a look at the traditional payment stack, which you can see here on the slide. As you can see, a very messy, fragmented uh, situation. And the example merchant we're using here is Pet Supplies Plus, which went through a very impressive transformation, not only on the payment side, but uh, of course, that's what we're talking about here today. Pet Supplies Plus is the largest merchant transacting via our integration, so very relevant, um, at least in volume terms, so relevant to use them as an example. And if you don't know them, they are the leading franchiser as well as operator of pet specialty stores in North America. And they selected Dynamics together with Audien to power its payments online and in store for approximately 230 of its own locations as well as 400 franchisee locations in the United States. And as I said, as you can see, they were dealing with a highly fragmented payment setup with multiple vendors covering each step in the process. And yeah, payments in general are quite complex. If you're familiar with it, you know that. If you're not familiar with payments, you don't always know what's going on in the background. But as you can see, there are multiple systems that are involved in the, in the payment process. So. Depending if you process online or offline, there will be a gateway where the payment is initiated and the car data is captured. This could also be terminal in store, of course, and where some initial risk um, checks or fraud checks are being done. And of course, the authentication. That data is then passed over to the processor who package the data and bring it over to the card schemes as well as the, the acquiring bank. That's where the communication happens um, towards the issuer in terms of are there sufficient funds? Can we accept this payment? And then the whole package of data goes back through the process. Um, of course, reconciliation is part of this as well, but we'll come back to that later. Now, the point here is that if you use separate vendors and contracts and systems for all of these steps, this creates a lot of challenges when it comes to the complexity of your setup, as well as the costs associated with it. Because complexity not only increases costs, uh, it also demands significant resources for maintenance and management of all these solutions, which essentially detracts from the focus on the core business activities, in this case, selling uh, pet supplies. The second major challenge that we see is that there's a lot of inefficiency, inefficiency in the data utilization, as well as the ultimate conversion of your shoppers. Because of such fragmented systems, capturing and leveraging payment data becomes very difficult. And Pet Supplies Plus, for example, complained a lot about the poor customer insights. Essentially, they didn't know their customers well. They didn't know um, which payment cards they were using online, offline. There was no recognition happening there. And they were complaining about poor conversion rates as well. For example, on the e-commerce side, the redirect away from the payment page increases card abandonment, which you might be uh, familiar with, while manual risk management processes and also not optimized authorization rates simply lowers the success of your transaction. Lastly, we already mentioned it, uh, there's the challenge, the big challenge of reconciliation uh, as well as financial reporting. Because with traditional setups, reconciling payments across different channels with all these different systems 
and the different tracks across the channels can be very inconsistent and especially time consuming due to the varied data format. The manual consolidation process not only slows down settlement, of course, but also delays financial reporting, which then again impedes timely business decision making and financial planning. So the point here is that with a traditional, as we call it, only channel uh, payment infrastructure and with its fragmented approach, there are significant challenges related to cost, efficiency, efficiency, sorry, and financial operations, making it increasingly unsuitable for today's fast-paced as well as data-driven business environment. Now, let's rather have a look now that you stayed in a problem, shifting our focus to the unified commerce approach that we provide together with Microsoft. In short, Audion acts as a single payments platform covering the end-to-end -end payment process across all channels and regions. Our platform is built built fully in-house without any third-party developers, uh, meaning we own all of the codes, we never made any mergers, never did any acquisitions, so everything is our owned in-house. For a large retailer like Pet Supplies Plus, this enables multiple benefits. Firstly, there's the end-to-end -end control over the payment process and the efficiency that comes with that. With Audion, Pet Supplies Plus simplify the payment process with, as I mentioned, a single platform that manages everything from the initial transaction all the way to the to reconciliation. This means that Pet Supplies deals with just one contract and one partner, streamlining operations, also leveraging our global expertise with the local presence that we mentioned before. And this control also extends to innovations, allowing them to quickly adapt to market changes and consumer needs just relying on Audion, and in this case, together with Microsoft on providing those innovations. Secondly, we talked about conversion rates and customer experience. A good thing to mention here is that Audion supports over 150 payment methods and also offers native checkout options, which are really crucial for catering to a global customer base. There's also, as you can see, automated risk management and yeah, really quite advanced authorization rate optimization engines running in the background, which increases transaction success rates. We will also talk about offline processing a bit later, which is crucial in, of course, reducing wait times and improve that in-person customer experience, but more on that later. Lastly, I'm also coming back to the topic of data integrity and, and financial operations because with Audion businesses gain access to unified payments and customer insights across all channels which is critical for making informed strategic decisions data integrity is also critical for achieving higher transaction and um, success rates as the data remains consistent from the initial point of sale all the way to accepting and approving the, the transaction. On the financial reporting side, we provide a uniform reporting standard and in-platform reconciliation, which accelerates that speed of settlement we talked about and consolidating financial records. And yeah, in the end, this really simplifies the end of day and the end of month closing process, as you can imagine. With this unified commerce platform approach, we can empower businesses to achieve more with less. So there's less complexity, but more control. There's less fragmentation, but you get more insights. And there's of course less manual effort while we provide more automation and efficiency. And I also want to give a big shout out here to, to Microsoft. And I'll use uh, this quote here from the CIO of Pet Supplies Plus, as they really highlighted the speed of go live. Um, we often get into discussions with merchants at the point where they realize that uh, go live dates might not be met. And then they can really benefit from this native integration, which has been built and maintained by Microsoft in order to speed up that go live process. This actually brings us to the next slide, which are the key benefits of our native integration with Dynamics. The first one is what I just mentioned. It's really about reducing the time to markets with a faster implementation, as you don't need weeks of development work, which you might have if you need to build a custom integration with another PSP, but you can just configure this within your environment in just a few hours meaning merchants can focus on business um, and don't have to spend endless uh, hours on, on implementing a, an integration. From a support perspective, there is no need to navigate that labyrinth of third-party vendors that you saw before. Troubleshooting directly happens between Microsoft and Audien, um, and we will talk you through our troubleshooting process a little bit later in the presentation. Of course, features are important and having access to all the features that we offer the good thing here is that all merchants automatically benefit from the functionality and the payment methods that might have been added to the integration for one or other merchants. So there's no additional cost to add those to your uh, implementation. And lastly, unified commerce flows like buy online, pick up in store, buy online, return in store, endless aisle, etc. 
these are all available out of the box. So as mentioned before, Audien has its own banking licenses, which enables us to act as the acquiring bank, as I already told you. This is available uh, for the reasons that you can see here on the slide. I won't go through them. Uh, we will also make sure to share these with you. These are also available, um, or the country coverage is available on Microsoft's documentation. The point here is that with this single platform, we provide customers the ability to scale their business internationally with the ease of that one single integration and not having the need to um, add additional local providers. So as you can see here, in short, we're fully available in North America, uh, the EU and the UK. And then in LATAM, we cover Mexico, Puerto Rico, Brazil, and in APEC, we have Australia, New Zealand, um, Japan, and Con Malaysia, Singapore. Meaning, I anyway covered all the, the, the countries we cover. Um, of course, we continuously add new countries um, to, to our coverage, with India actually being a very exciting one that's coming up later this year. Good. That also brings us to payment methods. Um, it may seem like an obvious one that doesn't need repeating. However, many businesses actually still don't accept all major credit cards and let alone the popular payment methods from other countries. What we see is that this is really a big missed opportunity because consumers really care about how they pay and what they pay with. Audien offers 150 or over 150 payment methods globally. So essentially you never have to miss the sale as you can cater to a variety of customer preferences without the need for multiple integrations with those separate payment methods. So I think whether you're a Microsoft partner or a Microsoft customer, it's always good to think about the gaps in the current offering of payment methods and also really considering foreign shoppers who might have different payment preferences than those in your domestic locations. So the point is meeting these preferences, it's not a nice to have, it's really essential to the way that we improve conversion. Then a little bit less tangible maybe, but it's good to mentioned that Audien prices or we proud ourselves on the white glove support that we provide to merchants. Uh, this is a complaint we often hear in the payment space um, that there is no, people don't know where to go to with, with issues. If something goes wrong, they don't know who to call. Um, at Audien, we provide a dedicated account manager um, for all our customers, for each customer. And we have a dedicated support team for our partner integrations. So as you will interact with Audien, perhaps via your Dynamics Commerce instance, we can also cover for those use cases with our support or we work together with the Microsoft team. For the implementations, you always will be supported by a project operations manager who helps you guide the overall implementation along with an implementation engineer who covers technical topics and, and provides hand on support, making the implementation a success. And as you already mentioned, we have dedicated partner managers working on the Microsoft integration and especially people like Laura here on the call are fairly experienced supporting those implementations and helping our internal teams um, make the best use of our integration. So moving on, um, we are of course always asked about pricing. Um, payments do come at a cost and here we like to provide full transparency. Uh, you can actually find our standard pricing via the link provided here. So I won't cover that now because it all depends on the payment methods and locations, but you can check it over there. However, you know, in short, the fees are charged on a transaction basis and they are consistent regardless of, of, the, of the channel you process in. Terminals are priced separately and there's also an optional replacement service fee. We can also share those, that pricing with you uh, on request and you can see um, the, the email addresses here of the people you can contact. Delving a bit deeper into the pricing, so per transaction, we essentially charge a fee including refunds um, for, uh, we charge a processing fee rather, that's for being the gateway. Uh, and then for every successful transaction, we charge a fee specific to the payment method use. So for cards like Visa and MasterCard, also Apple Pay and Google Pay, by the way, um, the payment method fee that we apply is called Interchange Plus Plus, which is a very transparent model. As you can see exactly um, what part of the fee goes to the um, to the issuing bank, so that's called the interchange fee. What part of the fee goes to the schemes like Visa or Mastercard, and what is the acquiring markup that Audien charges for the transaction? We also do offer revenue enhancing products, uh, for example, um, for mitigating fraud, 
uh, which is also priced for transaction, but also priced separately. Do keep in mind that pricing is typically quite ad hoc, depending on the merchant size, the payment mix, the country coverage. So my question or my ask to you here would be, involve us early um, to, um, yeah, to talk about that with you, uh, we can do that in conjunction with Microsoft. Um, so as I mentioned before, you can reach out to Alessio for anything in North America, LATAM and APAC. And I'm here to support you from the from the India region perspective. Good. Let's talk terminals. We offer a wide variety or a wide range of uh, fully certified in-person payment solutions, as we call them, with options for every business. So this ranges from mobile POS terminals um, all the way to multimedia terminals, scalper pop terminals, and even tap to pay as well. So tap to pay on iPhone, tap to pay on Android. As Microsoft always integrates with the latest version of what we call our terminal API, you can use every terminal with the payment connector. Um, however, let me quickly touch on perhaps the most popular ones here uh, that we see with our joint customers with Microsoft. Uh, the first one being the P400 Plus, which is probably the most common one and is a great option for large retailers who require um, yeah, a premium design of the terminal and a very feature-rich uh, solution. A fun example here is uh, Best Supplies Plus from earlier. So every time a shopper conducts a successful transaction, the terminal will actually bark, which is uh, pretty interesting, but it's possible. There's also the V400M. Yeah, this one is often used by luxury retailers who want a more portable uh, terminal with printing capabilities. And this actually brings me also to the S1, S2, which is a um, a newer terminal and that you're probably most excited about uh, at the moment together with Microsoft. As this is a mobile device with a large screen, which you can run the D365 Commerce app on, along with barcode scanning and printing functions. And this is the terminal that we will uh, demonstrate later on. It is so, maybe with, worth, worth oh, mentioning, sorry, no, uh, today we, we work with uh, two providers, which is very fun and uh, castles, but we also have started building on devices such as the AMS one and NYC one. Uh, so we are expanding offering uh, these days. Good. Let's move to the terminal fleet manager. Uh, this is a functionality that um, our merchants typically are quite enthusiastic about. Um, so the terminal fleet manager allows you to streamline the management of those terminals in basically one customer area. So this enables efficient control over the device, devices, including the order, um, as well as the configuration, which allows really operational efficiency and global management through our audience dashboard. To give you an idea of what this, uh, what this actually means. So with terminal fleet manager, you can, first of all, order terminals in a fully self-service experience within our customer area. So you can either order complete terminal packages, of course, but also the individual components needed like cables or uh, charging docks. Plus you will also have comprehensive visibility into the status and the location of your orders at any time. Self-boarding is also really cool. So we understand the importance of a smooth setup for, for your store staff. And that's why we made it easy for them to select their location directly on the terminal, which then retrieves the correct configurations from the audience backend without any hassle. So this eliminates the manual setup and ensures each terminal is ready to go with the right settings for that specific location. Next, there's also fast pairing. Uh, I think time is money, uh, very relevant here. And we've accelerated that uh, pairing process because of that between the terminals and the cash register. So now terminals can quickly pair by simply being in the proximity of the cash register using beacons, uh, scanning a QR code, or just simply selecting from a list of connected and, and active terminals. This flexibility ensures that your terminals are always connected and ready to process payments. And lastly, uh, our terminals are designed to be, to be future-proof, so they automatically receive the latest software updates, including the addition of new payment methods. That means that as your payment infrastructure involves with the markets, uh, there's no manual intervention. Uh, required is all happening automatically from that one uh, dashboard. Yeah. Also there, uh, with the integration, the recommendation of Microsoft is actually to have a more of a manual integration uh, with firmware updates. Uh, Microsoft is always testing any uh, new firmware updates within their own environment. So we tend to want to have our merchant on a manual process at the moment. Microsoft will always publish the latest version that is available for our firmware uh, based on the also the uh, current uh, store commerce versions. But that is the recommendation at the moment. Yeah, good point, Laura. Thank you very much. Um, next up is um, how do we handle payments in case of a lost network connection? 
So Audio provides solutions to ensure that merchants can continue accepting those payments even when there are yeah, network issues. Uh, the first one being something we call store and forward. So in scenarios where offline payments are necessary, the Audion terminal can store the card data and the transaction details to process those payments later when the internet connection is restored. This feature does require setting up certain parameters like the maximum transaction amount and the number of offline transactions allowed per terminal to give you control over what happens. Um, and second, we also offer a 3G or 4G alternative when the primary internet connection is down. So the audio payment terminal can switch to a cellular 3G or 4G connection to process payments, which allows for continuous transaction processing, even in the absence of traditional internet access. Good. There's one more thing that I will cover and then handing over to Laura, uh, pay by link. Pay by link is a feature not available out of the box uh, with Dynamics 365, but it is good to, to uh, highlight it as it can be added by the customer itself um, or by the by your system integrator if needed. Pay by link is a feature uh, that allows merchants to accept payments through a secure Audien host payment page. So it facilitates sending a payment link to the customer who can then use it to complete the payment using whatever their preferred payment method is. So these links can be shared through various channels such as chat, email, social media, call center, as we cover with Microsoft as well, really providing flexibility in how you engage with those customers. The payment page is also adaptable to different devices and it can be customized with your brand's name and logo to maintain consistency in the customer experience. Again, something that's not available out of the box, but which is used by a lot of the customers that we service together with Microsoft, as it can be added uh, or customized for the integration. Nora, at this time, I'll be uh, handing over to you. Thank you very much. Um, so as mentioned previously about Jacob, everything is centralized on our platform. That's allowing us to provide reconciliation files for e-commerce and install payments uh, from our customer area. It is also possible to integrate these reports in any of the major ERP systems in order to provide automated reconciliation. For that, webhooks are crucial for a successful integration with IDN. And the only way uh, for you to receive automatic updates about, for instance, events that are be not being triggered by a request from your site, for example, in the case of initiated chargeback, or for instance, in this case, for a new report that becomes available. Uh, these requests are processed asynchronously, for instance, uh, for local payment methods, such as ideal, the outcome of the payment method might take several hours confirmed. And we know whether the payment uh, was successful, we send you a webhook event to inform you about this. So you can use webhooks to automate business processes, but for us, for example, order management or downloading reports for accounting. For some of these reports, like the aggregate settlement reports, you will need to choose how often you want to generate them. So there's a lot of flexibility around that. You can also indicate the time zone setting and that will affect uh, whether or not when the reports are generated. Uh, we do have some instruction on our public docs pages regarding the webhooks pages on how to expose this uh, to an endpoint and how to set it up in the customer area. Uh, when a new report will be generated, you will receive a report available webhook and you'll be able to download this report with HTTP GET request. To authenticate the request, you will be requested to use an API key or basic authentication. It is worth to mention that at the moment, it is not possible to do an automated reconciliation out of the box with the commerce solution, but we have seen uh, quite a lot of system integrators and merchants successfully integrating uh, the solution. And offering the to Microsoft for the next slide. Thanks, Laura. Now we will talk about omnichannel payments and supported payment scenarios in Dynamics 365 Commerce. As you all know, omnichannel payments refer to the capability of initiating an order in one channel and completing its fulfillment in another. The key to effective omnichannel payment support lies in maintaining payment details alongside other order details, utilizing these payment details when processing or recalling the order in a different channel. As known, at a common business scenario in Omnichannel is buy online, pick up in store. In Dynamics 365 Commerce, we have three primary channels involved here. They are e-commerce, store, and call center. To facilitate payments for those channels, the payment configuration is required. For e-commerce payments, the payment connector needs to be configured for online stores. 
Similarly, for store operations, the payment terminal should be set up. And if you are using call center functionality, the payment services in accounts receivable module needs to be completed. This configuration is crucial to enable seamless channel payments. When fulfilling an order, the payments SDK attempts to utilize the same connector used for the original authorization. Therefore, a payment connector with identical merchant properties must be available for capturing payments. And the last but not least, you need to use the same setup for tender types and card IDs for each channel to process omni-channel payments. Now let's briefly go through the different payment connectors that are available for use in Dynamics 365 Commerce. All supported omni-channel scenarios are implemented using the standard payment software development kit. We call it as Payment SDK. First, we have Dynamics 365 Payment Connector for Adyen. The out-of-box Dynamics 365 Payment Connector for Adyen utilizes the standard payment SDK. This connector can be configured in retail stores, which seamlessly support store operations, including card present transactions with payment terminals. And it can be configured in commerce and call center to support card not present business scenarios as well. Next, you see on the second line is the Dynamics 365 payment connector for Apple Pay. Apple Pay is a digital, wall digital wallet payment method that uses an Apple Pay merchant account in coordination with Adium Payment Service. For e-commerce, the Apple Pay option is shown on the order checkout page, and this option is only on supported Apple Pay devices. Apple Pay can also be configured for use in stores that have Adium Payment Terminals. Then we have the Dynamics 365 Payment Connector for Google Pay. Google Pay is another digital wallet payment method that uses a Google Pay merchant account with Adium Payment Service. A Google Pay option available is selectable payment method during e-commerce order checkout as Apple Pay. It can be also configured with Adium Payment Terminals and the commerce point of sale for in-store use. Last one is the Dynamics 365 Payment Connector for PayPal. The PayPal Payment Connector is implemented using the same payment SDK that is used for credit card payments. It supports the use of the PayPal wallet or PayPal button for e-commerce payments. When the PayPal Payment Connector is configured for online storefront, customers are presented with the option to pay using the PayPal button at the time of payment. Orders with PayPal payment lines are fulfilled in the same manner as orders that are paid using a credit card. When an order is created, the payment PayPal payment uh, is added and authorized state. Upon fulfillment, whether the order is shipped to the customer from a distribution center or picked up in a store, the payment authorization associated with the order is then captured. Now we will look at the different supported payment scenarios. Over to you, Harish. Thanks, Maxi. In commerce, you would see two types of payments by transaction at a broader level. Uh, first one is the cash and carry transaction where payments are captured immediately when the transaction is concluded. This requires physical card unless a uh, payment accepting page has been implemented. We call it as a card present scenario. And to support this in store, a payment terminal must be configured to utilize it. The second transaction type is the customer order where all the sales orders created in online or call center channel fall into this definition. For pause, only orders with lines configured for shipping, pickup, or mix of ship and pickup and carry out fall into this definition. Here, the card is tokenized and balance due is authorized and the payment is captured at the time of invoicing. The deposits, however, are captured immediately. From a store perspective, it supports both cash and carry and the customer order scenarios. You'll also hear about card not present in store. In point of sale, the card not present is primarily utilized for customer order creation, edits, pickups, and link refunds for customer orders, as well as cash and carry transactions. Please note, if an order is canceled or edited, then there will be a reauthorization, which happens automatically. Along with the conventional payment method, we have Apple Pay, Google Pay, which are digital wallet payments, as called out earlier. PayPal is currently supported only for online platform scenarios and it is not supported via RDN in the store scenarios. Some scenarios are unsupported for Apple Pay and Google Pay and 
there is a consideration to support these scenarios in future. Please note that the RDN payment terminals are configured either using IP address or with the cloud architecture where you use the ID you received while onboarding the payment terminal in the RDN portal. Now let's switch and see what are the call center scenarios that are available. Unlike the stores and the e-commerce channel, call center transactions are virtual in nature, basically done over phone and essentially card not present is in nature. Customer usually makes a call to call center when they want to place an order uh, or when they want to modify an order. The most common payment scenario in these call centers are credit cards and gift cards. Besides this, on account is also commonly used in case of B2B scenarios where the end customer has an established credit limit. Payment types like wallet payments, PayPal, 3DS authentication, etc. are not supported in case of call center at this moment. The support required to activate credit card payments for call center is simple. All you have to do is to update the detail in payment service form in the accounts receivable module. Once you set up the account with RDN, you can create a payment service record with D365 payment connector for RDN as a payment connector type there. Though you will see other options like PayPal, Google Pay, and Apple Pay on the connector setup, those options will not be operational for call center. Let's quickly switch to the supported online scenarios. Here are some of the common functional scenarios for e-commerce support provided by RDN and other payment connectors. Many of these scenarios are already used by customers in production as we speak. For example, buy online, pick up in store scenario, or buy online, ship to home. RDN and PayPal provide all these capabilities where RDN for Apple Pay and RDN for Google Pay don't provide the capabilities for call center as we called out earlier. When the RDN for Google Pay is configured, the Google Pay button is available as a selectable payment method during the online or a checkout. When user selects the Google Pay in a supported browser or device, they are re redirected to complete their payment directly with Google Pay service. They are then returned to online uh, storefront to complete the order. When RDN for Apple Pay is configured, the Apple Pay button is selectable payment method that's part of the online store's checkout page. The Apple Pay button is presented as a payment option only for supported Apple Pay devices. When the users select Apple Pay on the supported browser or device, they are directed to Apple Pay service to complete the payment directly. They are then returned to the online storefront for their order completion, like we saw in the earlier scenario. Now let's go and talk about the e-commerce supported payment options. Here are some of the payment schemes in e-commerce channel and ability to use express checkouts. Commerce includes a payment express module that enables express checkout behavior. Payment express modules can be used on the checkout or the card pages. When Google Pay is used with the express checkout module in commerce, the user payment account information is automatically pre-populated in the checkout form to help shoppers get through the checkout process faster. With commerce version 10.0.34, shoppers can use Apple Pay express payments to check out faster as well. They can choose Apple Pay in the Express Pay section, authenticate their account, and select their payment, contact, shipping, and delivery options. After re-authenticating, the order is placed, and they can see their order summary. Now let's switch to the external gift card scenarios. As we know, a gift card is a type of payment card that has a preset value and can be used for various purchases. The out-of-box payment connector for RDN supports external gift cards through SVS and GiveX in point of sale, call center, and the e-commerce storefront. For e-commerce and call center, today only SVS is supported by RDN to sell the gift card electronically. Refund to gift card is not supported as of today. You cannot do a refund directly to the used uh, originating gift card. Refunds will process to another defaulted channel refund method. You cannot process a ref refund order in pause with an issued gift card in the same transaction as customer might throw off a gift card after using it. Partial payment is supported when gift uh, when using gift cards. The transaction partially purchased using gift card can be voided later for remainder lines. Related to voiding gift card payment, please note once a gift card is used as a tender for payment and it's accepted, it cannot be voided. Buying a gift card on pause and then voiding from another channel is not supported as of today. With that, I'll hand it over to ADN team for S1, F2 all-in-one terminal demo. Thank you very much. As mentioned before, IDN is capable of providing Android Castle devices, which are serving multiple business purposes. So for instance, you can download your preferred business app running on Android to check your inventory, customer history. 
uh, as long as they are capable of running uh, on Android. Uh, so it can run on Android 9 or 10, depending on the region where the device is. Uh, we have a version that is available without a printer for offering a fully mobile journey. And the terminal in the picture you see here is capable of printing receipts. It is working uh, with 4G connection, but as well Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. Models like the S1F2 or the S1F1 uh, are available within the ADN catalog, but also are existing with newer models, which are called S1F2L, which are providing a professional barcode scanner that can be used with Star Commerce out of the box. The Star Commerce application is available in the LCS and can be uploaded into the customer area of ADN and deployed automatically to all of your devices. The Star Commerce capability on this device are fairly similar to the one you can have in the fixed post environment, allowing full mobility in store or elsewhere. Uh, so here you can see a quick demo video of the Star application, Star Commerce application running on our cast store devices, including the scanning capabilities. You can see the selection of the article. This is a full transaction flow where the article is being scanned and added to the basket. We can select, for instance, the color and the size of the article. And then we go into the payments, selecting cards, which will then go to the ADN screen. Payment is done on the device and back to the store commerce app. So um, ADN typically look at a project uh, with this pass to go live um, involvement. We start scoping the project and go through a list of requirements together in order to provide the best solution fit to all of our merchants. We go then into implementation phase and we start putting all the technical pieces together, which then leads into a test phase with our test environment. At the end, provide a test environment to the merchant, if required as well to the SI or the partner, and also access to terminal offering where you can uh, make your own orders to re um, get our test terminals that will allow you to complete these steps seamlessly. We also provide test cards uh, for install payments and all of our documentation is publicly available with docs.adn.com. Depending on the size of project, as mentioned by uh, Jakob before, you will also get access to the implementation manager and also a project manager, while the partnership team will be involved when required. The next step is to start putting in place the end-to-end -end testing with all the technical bits together feature coverage, payment methods, payouts, reports, including our partner integration. Go live is the last step to validate all the previous phases in our live environment. It is important to mention that we have a support team, which is available within ADN. What we see very often is that uh, we get requests uh, to add specific roles and properties to configure the connector in our system. Uh, we are available to help with that. As mentioned, our docs are available publicly and we have a page, especially from Microsoft, which explains all the connector is built and functioning. When we usually see recurring issues related to the configuration done within Microsoft D365, we can help figure out where the issue is at and are constantly in contact with Microsoft to help with any ongoing topics. It is important to mention that for troubleshooting and configuration issues related to the solution, we have solution experts, which are available in the partner support team seen in this slide, that can be contacted. What we usually require is the information of the type of Microsoft product used, such as Star Commerce, Star Commerce Robot, Call Center, and the version used, as well as the actual context of the issue, in order to be able to provide you with the best support. Uh, thanks, Laura. So, Harish, if there are any questions, we can we can bring it up here and then we can answer. Sure. I think there's a bunch of questions I see our presenters are already responding. And I'm, I'm going to bring in some of them here. So, I'll go with the first one. Can we use existing EFT POS machine in RDN? Laura, I know you have responded. You want to take it and discuss a bit more about it to the larger audience here? Yes, of course. Um, so, the question is whether or not we can use... Um an EFT POS terminal, so meaning a terminal that is not an ADN terminal. Our answer on that is um, that we really need ADN terminals. Uh, and the reason behind that is that we load our own security keys to our devices to provide an encryption within ADN services and the terminals. So that can only be done with ADN terminals in that case. So EFT POS machine will not work with the ADN solution. Second one, is it possible to filter payments by terminal ID in RDN portal? Again, Laura, I think you, you did respond to the chat. So 
So yes, it is possible. So it, in the transaction list of ADN, there is a lot of filters that can be added. Uh, generally speaking, we have the most common ones that are available in the filtering. But if you click on plus, there is a possibility to add more filters and we guide you uh, to add the transaction, uh, sorry, the terminal one, where you can uh, then have a, a filter list of all the transactions for the specific terminal. All right. I think there's one question with respect to firmware. Um, is the firmware from RDN downward compatible with Microsoft, saying latest RDN firmware is 1.99 and the latest tested version from Microsoft is version 38, would be 1.91. Would it be safe to update 1.99 if Microsoft is still on version 38? Usually RDN seems to be faster than softer than Microsoft. So I know uh, Srinath and Laura you kind of responded there. So what do you guys? Do you want to first? Yeah, so we, uh, we published the list of... Uh, uh, minimum and uh, maximum versions um, in our uh, website and add in uh, further updates. So um, as long as the uh, major version is supported, it's, it's okay to have um, uh, the minor version updates within the same major version. Plus, we are also working with add in um, um, closely to see if we can make this process even better by working through an update process, which also closely ties with those power our um, version updates. Yeah, just to add on to that, we are actually working on a specific version that will be um, actually adding to these cases, uh, which will probably match more the um, update cycles of Microsoft. So we'll hopefully make this process uh, easier for all our merchants in the nearby future. There's one more question with respect to settlement. Is there an out of box way to read the settlement file from RDN into the display of a no? The finance and operations rights. Uh, at the moment, uh, from Microsoft, I believe we don't have a way to automate that, uh, but we know that there is a few system integrators who have already built a solution uh, which is capable of doing that. And if there are for further questions on that, you can reach out to us and we can point in the right direction. Also want to mention that this is something that we are discussing with Microsoft. Um, we just uh, cannot yet uh, confirm anything around that point. All right. There's one more with respect to S F2. With S F2, does it have the availability to run both the stroke commerce for Android app as well as the stroke commerce for web? What drivers do these use in order to configure hardware profile from back office? So the S1 F2 is capable of using the stock commerce app for Android. In the case, so we know that in some specific geographies, because of some requirements such as uh, fiscal printers or some specific um, hardware profiles that need to be in place, you would still need to have an hardware station, so meaning the stock commerce for web solution. Um, but that is purely linked to uh, some of these requirements. But only stock commerce can be run on Android devices at the moment. All right. Thanks, Laura. Uh, there's one more with respect to language support. Regarding the language support with RDN portal, particularly in languages such as Arabic, how flexible is the portal in accommodating multiple languages? I know you covered a bit more on the localization and support in different regions. Do you mind elaborating a bit more in detail, Laura? Uh, Jacob, maybe that's one you have. Yeah, in the customer area, we support English, of course, as well as uh, Portuguese, sorry, and, uh, and Japanese. All right. And uh, there's one more. Are there any automated tools or reports in place to facilitate the recon whole reconciliation process, thereby enhancing the efficiency? I know, Jacob, you touch base a bit more on that if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I think Laura can talk best about the, the APIs and netbooks available on our site. Uh, what I will quickly highlight is that there are third-party providers that are available on the Microsoft App Source um, that facilitate automated reconciliation for this specific integration. We also have a agreement with those providers um, and I'll specifically highlight MaxPay Controller. Um, so feel free to reach out to me if you want to uh, learn more about that. And Laura, can you quickly touch upon what's, what's, uh, or how we typically, um, support automated reconciliation, maybe more in general. Um, so in general, all the process looks like, uh, is that we look at all the merchant is requiring to do reconciliation. So is it like line by line reconciliation? Is it like a batch settlement reconciliation? We can provide any kind of reports that are matching this. And based on that, uh, the merchant will decide what we like, which reports are needed to be retrieved. Uh, there's, as I mentioned before, there's like, for instance, Godon that can be customized to retrieve like some specific information. So for instance, like 
terminal IDs, store ID. If there is anything specific that the merchant wants to to have there, we can uh, add that. And then they can be retrieved into uh, your server uh, and automatically added into the ERP system to match the transactions that are currently available within the ERP system. So uh, this is like in a simple way how that works in order to have the automated conciliation. Thanks, Laura. I don't see any further questions. I've been over to you. Yeah, thanks, Adish. Uh, thanks, team, uh, attend for attending the Tech Talk session. Hope this is insightful. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.